Our next guest is a FLW Pro YouTube creator. Also has a great Facebook page. I should mention that too. Been a professional guide. Five tournament wins. Been to the Force Cup champion or been, been to two Force Cup appearances. His sponsors include Striking, Powerpole, Mercury, Ranger, Costa, TH Marine, Hummingbird, Luz, Falcon Rods, Tackle Addict, and Toyota Tundra. We, I couldn't be happier to have my new friend who had a great day fishing, which is going to kill me later on today while I'm editing film, editing videos. Todd Castledean. Hello. How are you, sir? Oh, pretty good. How are you doing? I am doing great. Nice to finally meet you, man. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, on the phone quite a bit, so yeah, it's, it's good to see a face with a, a voice. Yes, yes. Well, I, I do appreciate it. Um, people that don't know, you've been doing YouTube, your YouTube channel, but also you've been a pro fisherman for how long have you been in this industry um so i i've been fishing tournaments and and i kind of went about it probably different than everyone else in the country so i've been fishing tournaments since i was probably 15 or 16 um pretty much been doing it through college i didn't do the college fishing thing um down here in texas it was kind of getting going but to be honest with you when i was doing it we were just we were fishing we were fishing against the big boys right off the bat, you know, fishing big events, team events on Rayburn with three hundred teams. Mm. Um that's how you did it. So when you were in college or eighteen or nineteen, there was no competing against guys your own age. You just had to you went and competed if, if you wanted to fish tournament against guys that were guys like me. So I mean, uh that's that's kinda how I've been doing it. I've been doing it full time. Um I, from about college on, so I'd say almost uh, 16, 17 years. How did you? But just, uh, but that was my main profession. I mean, yeah. I really never had a, a. Um, I had some little jobs through college and stuff, but I just literally fished for a living, fishing tournaments for the last fifteen years. How did you get introduced into the outdoors? Did your dad take you fishing when you were young? How did it get started? How did you get this? How did you get addicted? Yeah, um, so I grew up on Lake Livingston, or or my dad had a lake house on Lake Livingston, and so we kind of went up there on weekends and stuff, and catfishing. I mean, I I never really realized it, but man, I was just always by the water, either going white bass fishing all summer or catfishing, and then it was raining one day, and a guy had come in and put his boat in the marina, and uh, he said, he said, man, you ever bass fish? I said, no. He said, man, they're eating right over there. And he rigged me up a worm and a, you know, just a Texas rig worm. And I went over there and caught two. And I was in the seventh grade. And from then on, all I did was did the other, you know, white bass and catfishing. But it was almost 90% black bass fishing after that. And my dad, you know, I lived close to the marina where I could walk the marina. So I didn't have a boat. Yeah. Um, We had a pontoon boat. But I, I was able to walk somewhere and fish for for years I did that. That's that that's the the great thing. Do you ever is your do you still get to fish with your dad? I mean I, I mean No, he he passed away sorry, in uh, 2006. Oh, it's fine and um but I still uh we uh we fished we started fishing tournaments together um a couple years later and and fished a lot. We fished a lot. We had a lot a lot of arguments on the water, <laughs> but we had a uh, but when you spend that much time, me and him spent more time together than anyone else uh for a long time fishing so uh they were all good memories yeah that that's awesome do you have you have kids of your own though i think i saw a a, a son and a daughter yes i have a, a five-year-old boy and an eight-year-old daughter oh I, now the son is he got the is he got the juice i mean does he like it they both she probably has done it more okay um she's she's um you know how they are you get two kids or they're going to be a little different in how they approach things. She, uh, she started doing it. They've both done it. And I, and I take them very, I watch how I take them. I don't take them too often. Um, I try to only take them when it's really, really good Mm -hmm. and not for a long amount of time. But lately, um, they've been going a little bit longer and they went out there and caught some crappie the other day. So they enjoyed that, but she's caught some sight fish on her own. Um, he caught a six pounder the other day, crappie fishing. Nice. Caught it on his own. So, um, yeah, they 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 enjoy it. I don't know if it's more just enjoying it out there with me, mm-hmm. uh, but they do they do they're pretty good at it. They like it, 
and I kind of, I have to remind myself, I didn't really start doing this till I was in the seventh grade. So yeah. they've got a long time. I don't want to burn them out. Yeah. It, it's really good. I have a, I have a 10 year old just turned 10. He's been fishing with me and going places. You said the exact perfect words. You take them when it's hot. Because if not, they're training the bait and the and training the shrimp or doing whatever. They're doing something to annoy the living s out of you. But that's just you know that's just how it is. But it's still great right. to hear that you get them outdoors. Now you've how long have you been doing the YouTube channel? And everyone, if you don't know, it's Todd Castledine Fishing, the YouTube channel. Uh, I watch have watched every video to be honest. But how long have you been doing? Really? It? Yeah, I've watched way too so, way too many. So I, I was anti camera in the boat didn't understand it didn't get it in flw two years ago it was the first year they made us get a camera yeah so i just had to put one on i've always been intrigued by like wanting some of the stuff i do on film because to be honest with you the things i do i think all i ever heard was um from co-anglers and from anyone that fished with me is like i mean you do things so much different than everyone else um, and, and I knew that I knew I did. So I, I, re, you know, I put it on and I, I just, I, I didn't think much about it. I finally was like, Hey, if I'm going to use it, you know, have to put this on and I saved the footage, I started getting some pretty cool footage and I started a YouTube channel. I knew nothing about it. I just, it was a place for me to put the, the footage mm -hmm. and I finally, you know, learning how to use a camera and it took me forever to learn how to edit and all these things. And I got better and a little bit better and it really didn't take off. And it wasn't until, um, I mean, I had the, no subscribers or, you know, a hundred or 200 for months. Yeah. And I, the YouTube thing is so much different than just, just real fishing and tournament fishing. So me and Andrew Upshaw and Bradley Hallman, when we, um, stopped fishing the FLW tour and started fishing the Bassmaster Opens to try to qualify for the elites. It seemed like we were going to have to take things in our own hands. Yeah. And so we started getting better right around January is when all of a sudden it went from seven to eight months of just kind of a nothing on YouTube. And then all of a sudden it has skyrocketed and we have figured out how to do it. Um, and it's been it's been fun. Like I said, me and Andrew are out there today. He drove in from Oklahoma, and we spent all day long out there filming stuff and had a blast doing it. So um, we're doing a we're doing a lot of stuff, a lot of content, a lot of different things. So, so you you mentioned it just now. You were with FLW, the whole FLW craziness, Major League Fishing. I mean, that just has got blown up beyond belief. But you didn't want to go. You didn't want to stay with FLW and try to make the the bass pro tour you wanted to you, you thought that the elites were the way to go and why yeah okay <laughs> well, this could be a, I, know, I know that i can i can shorten it up um at the time of mlf and, and when they started it uh we can do two things one i was uh, you all I was at the top of the level with FLW yeah. and I say top of the level, there was nothing higher. Yeah. And all of a sudden now there was something higher. So now I had to go requalify for something, which I'm, I've re I've qualified for the tour every year through the coasts. I've qualified for the elites before. Um, so I have no problem trying to qualify mm -hmm. MLF at the time. There was no qualification. It's invite. So all those guys are invited. Half the guys at the elites were invited and I'm still stuck over here trying to qualify. So if I got to go qualify, I looked at what I wanted to qualify for. Mm -hmm. MLF was pretty hell bent on it's a numbers game. It's a one pound fish and things like that. And I could only go by what they were t saying. And at the time they were saying they weren't going to change the, anything, you know, now to a two pound deal, anything. Mm -hmm. And and if they had just said, hey, we're going to look into it. I might rethink it, but at the time I can only go off what they were saying. So they didn't want to change anything. They were going to do it this way. And, and by golly, we're going to stick by it. Well, I'm a guy who grew up fishing, uh, down here in Texas, really, really big fish. I'm still horrible at catching numbers. I know I told you today I caught some, Yeah. but, um, but it was still fishing for big fish. I mean, I just so happened sometimes that catches numbers. Um, 
my strengths are sight fishing, frog fishing, um, throwing big baits. I, I've always done that because I didn't worry about limits. I worried about trying to catch five. And the reason was, is we fished, I fished all those team events. And even in Texas, you can't just go out that you have to catch a giant bag to win. And I learned over the years that coming in fifth place is great, but it, you all you got to do is come in w- one or two first place a year and you're going to win 20, 30, 40 grand. Yeah. And that's the only way to make it. And so, you know, I just trained myself over years to do that. So with that being said, the MLF wasn't, it didn't fit my strengths mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. And then there was a two year process of, of qualifying in, were they going to let me qualify in? Because uh, to be honest, I just didn't know what they were going to do. It was a, it was there on year one, they were changing things rapidly. I, I got to be honest with you. And I haven't told many people this, this whole year has been a wash, right? For a lot of things. Like yeah. I don't, they're not going to get all the MLF tournaments. I don't think FLW will get them all in. Are they going to still make it two years? Yeah. And so, I mean, and so are, are you, are you now looking at now two more years after this year? I don't know. No one knows, but the elites are the elites and the opens are still the same. Still five fish. Um, we're going to get all of our opens in from what I see. They haven't, uh, canceled any of them they've just rescheduled them so it kind of it's worked out really well but that's kind of my my deal is i've I, I just that format fits me so much better and i i honestly and i'll be honest i did not like flw i've been there two years and they had raised the entry fee both years mm-hmm. and the payout did not get any better regardless of whose fault that was um I always said, hey, I'm not going down as the guy who paid the most entry fees ever to fish a tournament. I, I didn't – that didn't appeal to me. Yeah. Yeah, the, so. pay, the pay to play and how FLW completely – you know, even this year when th- – th- the beginning of the – I mean, we to be honest, last year was – I mean, last year was madness in the industry. I mean, really, we didn't know all the people moving. When FLW was purchased by Major League Fishing – it kind of felt like, and I mean no disrespect to any of the FL, FLW anglers that are out there, that there was, that what you said, there was a second tier. It was almost like they were a third string, they were they were the backups. And 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 with Major League Fishing, you, you, like you mentioned, you don't, we didn't know any of these changes they were going to make. And, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. I mean, it brings me into my next question, to be honest. Now that we've had this... Uh, Corona 19, how has it changed? I mean, are you still going? I mean, you went fishing today, but how has it changed your life and your family's life? Like, like, so I was, I was a little nervous, um, going into it. So we, we, um, so it's different this year. So down here in Texas, when I fished the tour, they don't let me fish any, any team events. So, and I'm a guy who, like I said, I make almost all my money just off tournament earnings or tournament wins or, or tournament, you know, fishing from yeah. tournament stuff. So um, if I fish the tour, the only other tournaments I can fish are basically coasts and opens. Mm-hmm. And we have big tournaments down here. So when I got off the tour, I was able to fish now team events again. And me and my, my partner, Russell Cecil, who also stopped fishing the tour, we jumped right back into the team stuff. Oh. Um, and so we were fishing that. Um, I actually went down to LBJ with Phil Marks, uh, Phil Marks from Strike King. You know, I'm sure you know who. And we uh, we came in second at LBJ right before. it was. That's the last tournament I fished. Um, I've never even been there. We just went down there and came in second, a bass champ. So I was making money in our team stuff and, and some BFLs again and – and I did good in my first open, so everything was going good, and I make my money during sight fishing, <laughs> and it literally shut us down right when the sight fishing started happening. So I was a little nervous, but I had started this YouTube channel, and it was still going really good. So I felt like I was still um, a part of something and still doing something, re- even though the tournaments had shut down. So 
as that kind of went in, everything, to be honest with you, has been really, really good. Um, the sponsors I have had, they've been able to stay afloat and keep going. None of them have had any setbacks. A couple, but not, like nothing major. So nothing really changed in that aspect of it. I'm still pushing out content on YouTube and doing that. So a lot of them are still happy with that. I, I got to be honest with you. I've spent more time with my kids over the past three months than I've ever been able to. Um, and I fished more than I've ever have in probably the last 10 years. Isn't because, that awesome? Yes. And let me tell you why. The team stuff, we have so many off limits where we are not allowed oh, to fish. Yeah. And okay. So, and then when I, when I travel, so much goes into traveling. Like you're, you're just gone from home you fish for a lot of days, you're shaking off fish, you're not really catching anything. When you come home, you don't want to go to the lake and just fun fish. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm just fun fishing like three or four days a week with my kids. Like I said, with Andrew, me and him and Hallman did a tournament with my buddy Jason. But I mean, it's on and on and on. We're doing all these things. I'm fishing. Listen, I'm fishing online tournaments right now. A guy called me up and I'm fishing online tournaments. Never done it. I'm not even... I'm entered in the tournament, but I'm actually not like paying for it. I'm not really receiving any money either. I'm just trying to put up a score. Yeah. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And to be honest with that, I've had a blast. Like I have, I'm fishing a lot. And this is the, this is the time when I learn the most is when you're just able to go out there and not worry about the pressure of like trying to find fish for a tournament. You're just, we just, me and Andrew just went out there and like learned some more stuff today. That's awesome. Okay. Now I've been. I've been all over Mark, our boy from Strike King, about trying to get this this new lure that I th oh. I don't. You have had a major influence on this. I think this is pretty much a lot of you in in this lure. I think they were going to release it this year at iCast, and now that iCast is gone, it's the new Strike King Hybrid Hunter. Only video I've seen of it is you fishing. I've watched it. One of them I've watched three times, to be honest. Just just keeping it real because I want to be honest with you. You have got to tell me how the whole process of creating this unbelievable bait happened and how come Mark Copley can't send me any yet. <laughs> okay. So this is a long story, but uh, there's more videos of it. Oh, there okay. is. Oh, yes. Okay, good. It, if There's one. If you want to look on there, how to fish grass. I did a how to fish grass video. Yes. I don't show the bait. That's the bait you were using then. Yes. Nice. And the reason is, is because it was still, so there's, there's that video. And then there's a video of, it's probably my number one video. It says banned across there. Yes. Me and my buddy Jason fished a tournament and we won it. <laughs> and, and I'm now not allowed to fish those tournaments anymore. They made some, they made some pretty interesting rules that pretty much affect six people in the country and i'm the only one that it affects <laughs> that fishes this turn so it's not a big deal i wasn't upset about it but in later in that video half of it's us crank crank deep crank and the other one is throwing that throwing that bait yes but i'm not i was not going to show that bait on camera until i was allowed to yeah but that is us catching them on that bait for the second half of that video of us just crushing on them. So there's, I've got some stuff in Florida of me catching them on it, but nice. I don't show the bait as well. There's, there's videos out there, but it doesn't show the actual bait. Me and Andrew did a video today on it because we probably caught 15 or 20 on it. Nice. Now, so now how did, how did the whole process of, did you know that you wanted this bait? Was there something that you yeah. saw in the industry that was missing that said, I need to do this? Well, so here's the deal. This is not a bait I invented or okay. made up okay. with. Neither did Strike King. Um, I was with a company called Strike Pro. Um, I, I I don't know the date. Two two thousand seven or eight. Okay. Um, it's a company out of Taiwan, um, and they had a they had a a place here in the U.S. It was actually down in Galveston Bay, uh, and so which is in Texas on the coast, whatever. And they were kind of a there there they had an affiliate of the U.S. side over here. Um, I got in with them on the bass fishing side, and and long story short, they Strike Pro 
makes baits for like all kinds of fishing stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if, if I, I don't even know what these fish are. They catch them in Sweden and all over the place. Yeah. They have teeth. They're just, it's just nuts. Right. Well, they have these baits and the, and the guys who, who make them, uh, kind of the president over there, he just, they just make 20, 30 baits a year. I swear. Well, there, I got these boxes when I was with strike pro of just, of just lures. And I would get them like just big giant monster boxes and there'd be a hundred different baits in there. Mm-hmm. And, some of them, most of them weren't that great or didn't really, I couldn't really figure out what to use them for. And I had this one bait, one, and it was this, it was just this one, this one bait, this one color and the color I did not like. Mm. I was like, well, you know what? It was one of those deals. Like, I don't know what to do with this bait and this weird, stupid color. <laughs> if it was an industrial color, I might go throw it. And you got to realize, I mean, hundreds of them. So I was always tinkering around, like throwing them. I made a cast with it one time. I'm like, that looks pretty cool. I don't know what to do with it. So I put it back up and never, never threw it again. Well, my buddy, Billy Howe, um, who was with him at the time, a saltwater guide who's phenomenal. And we, and another guy, I think it was Andrew. We all went to Rayburn one day and I was like, I brought like 10 or 15 baits. We're just going to throw these baits. Well, that was the first one I had tied on. And we went out there and within the first five minutes, we knew. And I started catching them so good and I had two other guys in there throwing rattle traps and everything else. And I was, it wasn't even a competition. I was killing them. Hmm. Well, we got on the phone and said, Hey, we need, there's only one in the U S I said, we need to get more of these. They didn't want to make them. This bait was made 20 years ago. Yeah. Cause no one had said that it was any good. Yeah. So they make any more. So we got in a big, not an argument, but we were like, we forced them to make some more. Um, and from then, like I said, Strike Pro Overseas is an awesome company. The one, and I ain't gonna lie, Strike Pro that was in America is, is gone. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't exist it doesn't. anymore. It, it, yeah. it failed. Um, but we got to see a lot of those baits. So we were always going to do something with this bait. And I really had no reason to bring it out anymore. My stockpile was getting pretty low. To be honest with you. And, uh, There's the truth. That's the truth no, right there. I, I, we always had enough. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, I know this feeling. I know this feeling. Yeah, Keep going. Sorry. I mean, you start you know, stressing out, so, man. You do. You do. And man, you give one your way or one their way. Well, anyways, me and Phil, I go out there and man, if you know Phil Marks, man, Phil Marks is like. He's from a different world, man. He's awesome. But I told him about this bait. He didn't care. Mm-hmm. And I told him about it for another year. He didn't care. I went out there one time and, and, and fish didn't cost some fish. He didn't care. And finally, I got him on Toledo Bend one day. And it, sh- like it, it showed out. It showed out like, like I've always seen it show out. And he looked at me and he goes, all right. All right. Now, it, and it got real serious real quick. I mean, it was one of those days. Yeah. Like it, it was, it was, he was like, this is all of a sudden it started clicking for him. Yeah. And I said, Hey man, this is what it's all about. So we, we kind of tinkered back and forth about how do we want to approach it? Like, how do we, we don't want to copy it. Yeah. We don't want to do any of that stuff. And he said, do you know those guys at strike pro? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I called up my buddy Leif on the, from the Sweden market. And I, I told him about what we were trying to do. And next thing I know, strike King licensed it out from strike pro. I orchestrated the whole deal. Strike pros loving it. Strike Kings loving it. I like it all worked out really well. And it's, it was really cool for me because I didn't know that could happen, but for two companies to come together and, and everyone's benefiting, right? I mean, they got extra stuff. We're getting what we wanted. We don't have to, copy it we don't have to get in all that stuff about you know uh, you know i don't like that part of the business the intellectual property all the crap that comes with this industry and then someone else comes out there and saying oh this is better and i'm like hey look i've been on this thing for 15 years i know how good it is i know when someone makes something that's not as good i don't want to try to remake this and it not be as good i want it to be I know how good it, you can't make this bait any better. Yeah. And 
it's the same bait. So we are we have the same bait. I think I was just the only, the first person in the U.S. to ever throw this bait. So like hands down. So like, what makes this bait so so amazing? I mean, from a th- talk about it from a Florida standpoint. Is it a shallow water a shallow water crankbait, or is it? Can you switch it up and make it deeper? What makes it, in your opinion, what makes it so good? Okay, so there's, and and since I'm allowed to do this right now, I can talk about um, what it does. It only goes at the most five foot. Okay. Okay. But here's the thing. It it has a weird L-shaped bill on it. Yes. I think you've seen some some Rapala baits maybe. I have seen some. Some big long you know, long baits that they had a, that bill. Yeah. And, and that bill is unique. Now it doesn't really, it, it does some things, but it's not everything. The bait is big and it's buoyant and it's very round looking. Uh-huh. And when I say round, it doesn't have, it, it's very round on top and round on bottom. And when you look at it at first glance and you might not have this bait for a year. And if I don't say anything, you'd probably never pay attention to it because it, of how it just looks different. It's flat sided. Okay. And so it's like, but it looks so, is it like a V? Right, it's wide. Okay. It's wide on top and it's wide on bottom, okay. but it, it's flat sided. But normally when you look at a bait like that, it does, you wouldn't think of it being flat sided. It's the most buoyant crankbait you'll probably ever throw. And it's probably the loudest crankbait you'll ever throw. Oh, Okay, with this L-shaped bill. So, this is the best way to explain it. All crankbaits dive like this. Mm -hmm. Okay? They all have an angle, right? So, when you pull them, they go down like this. And I can kind of see myself that I'm doing it right, right? So, they they go down. Yeah. And if you stop, kind of come back up. But as soon as you kick on them again, they go back down. This thing runs like this. And that L-bill doesn't make it dive like that. It just dives like this okay so as it's going through the water it just slowly goes up slowly goes down but it stays on that horizontal plane here's the key florida you got acres and acres of grass Mm -hmm. right any crankbait dives down into that grass Mm -hmm. well this so you're only allowed to fish it a very small like a foot or two and then you have to stop Mm -hmm. well this thing you can get it down there and it floats so good you can get it out of the grass, and then it takes it forever to reach down the grass again. So you're able to work it sometimes 10, 15, 20 foot before it hits grass again. Oh, that's great. But it's so buoyant, it's so buoyant that it floats up out of the grass without you doing anything. All rattle trap baits, right? Rattle trap, red eyes, everything else like that. But they still all. So what you're doing is you're ripping it out of the grass and letting it sink. You're doing the opposite here. You're staying down in the grass and letting it float up. Oh, yeah. So you'll see me rip sometimes. I'm not ripping it out of the grass. I'm ripping it to maybe get grass that's to get free from it. But you'll see me shake it. And what's shaking it is, is it's it's lit. When you start shaking it, it shakes and it comes out of that grass mm. backward. Yeah. So it's super loud. So I tell everyone, I'm like, if you think of it like a crankbait, if you think of this like as a 2.5 square build, like you're going to go run down the rocks of a causeway, you're going to miss the whole bait. Yeah. Um, it is a rattles, you know, vibrating bait. It is a jerk bait. It is a, it is a crank bait. And surprisingly, it's a swim bait. And I say the swim bait because all swim baits swim very. So I catch them a lot where people are catching them on swim baits. I'll throw this thing. Same thing with rattle baits, same thing with jerk baits, because since it's so buoyant and it's flat sided, when you jerk it, it goes nuts and goes crazy. It looks like a jerk bait underwater when you start popping it. And that's why I tell everyone is that like it's all those things combined. The problem with I think everyone's gonna have with this bait is they're so used to throwing certain baits at certain things Mm -hmm. and they're not gonna think to throw this thing there because there, it's not gonna. It, it's gonna. It's not gonna make sense for him. But like, I can throw that thing over a foot of grass. Nice. And it work, right? You might have to work it slower, but you keep your rod tip up. But anything else, like you'll see guys look at me 
all the time, and they'll go, man, he's throwing, he's throwing like a rattle trap up there, and they'll go make one cast where I just made a cast. It hits. They make two cranks and rattle traps hung up in the grass, mm-hmm. where I'm over there just working it nonstop, and so, and they can't figure out what's going on because it they they just assume I'm throwing like a rattles rattles you know trap style bait. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's really unique. It's really different, and there's nothing else like it. So it works on places. And I got to be honest, a lot of it times it works because people have never seen they, the fish, never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I've seen the, your videos. <clears throat> I reached out to Mark uh, last week. I told, I told them you were going to be on here to, to give you credit, and I, pre- we appreciate it. But I also was asking Mark, hey, do you guys, have you taken any really good photos of this thing? And, and he was like, look, I'm working on it, was exactly the text he sent me. And then I'm like, okay, I need to, I know I need to not ask after that but hopefully hopefully i think well i was going to be at the media conference i don't know if you were part of the going to be part of the media event at after the lake Hart, hartwell flw uh like in the end of a uh, the end of april or would have been it would have been last week i don't know if you were going to be part of that one no but they they had um i think me and phil had talked about that uh, i think they had said hey i don't need to go i i know that that we had just finalized colors. Me and Crispin had finalized colors um, a couple of weeks ago. How many colors are going, to be, so, are going to be available? Something I should know. 12 <laughs> or 14. Okay. I don't want to get that. We've gone back and forth on that. I, it might just be 12. Okay. Um, I'll have to look on that. And and so, I, I like, literally, we had gotten them. They came overseas like i think two weeks ago and i still don't even have that i was going to get a couple of them just to make sure and i hadn't even gotten them i, I kind of i've still got the prototype colors yeah so i've got like one here and one i don't even have all the prototype colors and maybe that's myself. why Mar- that's why maybe mark can't can't get it to me right so they were trying to do pictures for catalogs for icast for all these things because i think this is i think this might have ruined a lot of icast oh um, yeah of like what baits might be released like this whole thing you know everything's up in the air right now yeah i, I, I think that, i think they're still on board with this coming out it might not be till october but it's going to come out after i cast for, from what i understand yeah I, I i was talking to mark about we're going to do some iCast specials just technically you know get the get product have someone come on talk about the new product that kind of stuff but it's still it's kind of still in the works you know, it's, right. it's one of those. You know, you, normally we do a, a show on Saturday in, a, in at iHeartMedia, and this whole virus thing has just screwed up everything. Um, but you know, this is uh, this is why I'm doing these live from the Casa shows, and you know, just trying to keep some extra content out. I like like you. I I I know how much I know how hard it is to do content for YouTube alone, and and I don't even fish a quarter as much as you do. So, uh, but you got to, you got to just keep putting out that content because you're killing it. I love it. I mean, I really love it. I'd rather watch you than these dumbass Guggen squad little brats, to be honest. I want to see real fishermen. No, I'm going to offend somebody, but it's just how I am. I know. Well, here's the deal. Me and, me and, uh, when me and Hallman, okay, so me and my buddy Jason, we drive up to, you know, fish that. This tournament we made up against Holman and Bradley Holman and Andrew Upshaw in yeah. Texas, Oklahoma. and we were like, "Let's just go up there." We haven't been there in two years, and we we went out there and both caught like nineteen pounds, and it just showed up to a lake and crushed on them, right? And uh, they had a tournament two days later, sixteen pounds won it. Um, <laughs> I get some messages it's like, "Man, we really thought twenty five pounds was going to win that thing," and and man, you know, those are local guys, and I was like. I, I don't know what to say, you know, and there was, I'm not going to name who it was, but a, one of them, I think it was in the Guggen went up there the day before we were there and it was not good. Yeah. I, I, and I was going, I don't get, man, I'm, I don't get this YouTube stuff's hard on me sometimes cause uh-huh. I don't get it because now I didn't want to release stuff cause I didn't want secrets out there. Yeah. Well now I'm at the point where like, I don't like what people are putting out there because I think it's, I think it's wrong. There's, 
the problem. See, I've been doing our YouTube. Not everyone. Not everyone. No, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to make a mess for anybody. But um, right. I think what see we've been doing we've been doing this radio show for 12 years, and we've had an idea to do YouTube stuff for eight of the years. Well, it wasn't till last year, probably right around the classic, that we said. I said, I'm going to start filming something once or twice a week. Usually it's a, a lure review or something or me fishing or interviews like this that we put on the YouTube channel. And it, it's taken a year to even get to 4,100 subscribers, which I'm really happy about. But there's so many people. What I realize about YouTube is there's so many people that put out this crap and they use clickbait or they use a girl with her ass out or something like that or... They do – the amount of clickbait is retarded. I mean, I know that's horrible, but that's the way un, – it's unfortunate that's the way things work on YouTube. You have to put some sort of title to make people like your stuff. But really, right. that stuff generally isn't – that stuff that you click on that's clickbait is, has nothing to do with what you're going to see on that video. And it's a shame that that's how it works, but – some of those guys are really good about it. Not to mention, they said that I try not to swear. Truth be honest, there's a thing behind me. Maybe you can see. Maybe swearing will help. I, I I swear all the time, but there's a few words I don't say. The c word is one of them. There was a whole video about the c word on one of their channels the other day, and my son heard it at 10 years old, and I flipped out. I honestly, I flipped out. I'm like, why would they let this on? I know it's you know it is what it is, but why would they let this? Why would why would they not bleep that out for me? And it just yeah. it made me really pissed off. It, I don't watch much YouTube stuff. I never did. Um, I, I watch more of it now just because I'm interested, and in it. all it does is a lot of times make me mad. Um, <laughs> and and I, I always tell everyone this is I I contribute like I'm like hey what I'm going to tell you is not in a magazine. I'm not knocking any magazines out there, even the best ones out there. What, what I'm saying is, and it's kind of like a fishing report. Guys are going to give a fishing report on Rayburn, and I'm going to look at that, and it's a great way to catch a fish. Mm -hmm. Guys are going to Rayburn to go win tournaments. Yeah. Not one fishing report I've ever seen on Rayburn will win you a tournament. Mm -hmm. There are other things out there. Um, you know, hey, go throw a, it's always, go throw a Cinco or Worm on the edge of the grass. And, and I'm like, no, I mean, like, we don't do any of that stuff. We do this other stuff, and we want to show y'all. And it's been it's been good. 99% of the responses I've had has been good. I get 1% every once in a while. The hybrid hunter was a major one. They were like, I had all kinds of weird stuff about it. But so many guys were like, I didn't even see the bait. Or you didn't even talk about the bait. And I was like, look. Is gonna go show you a bait and talk about it for 20 minutes on my YouTube channel, and that's what you, I'm not gonna tell you. This is the best bait in the world, and just talk about it. Yeah, that's not me. Yeah, I can do something different. I'm gonna go show you 25 pounds on that bait and a whole bunch of fish catches. I shouldn't have to tell you how good it is. Yeah, I'm You're, showing the you the proof how good it is, is in the pudding. Right, and I'm like, and if you don't like that, I'm gonna make another video. And I'm going to catch 30 pounds on it. And if you don't like that, I'm going to catch and do another video. Because my point is, is I shouldn't have to ever tell you about a bait. If you can watch me catch fish on public waters, not in some pri on public, on Rayburn, on wherever I go, down in Florida. I'm using them in tournaments where money is on the line. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this stuff. That, if that doesn't show you how good of a bait I think it is, because in a tournament, we're going to use exactly what we think can do, make us the most money. Exactly. I'm not going to sit there and worry about a YouTube channel trying to get, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just an afterthought. So that's where I'm like, hey, guys, this is this is how I'm running my YouTube. I think what y'all are used to is what YouTube used to be like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't think that that's right. So I'm trying to do stuff differently to really show people to show them what I think they should really be looking at rather than something that I think they can read in a magazine that sounds great. You're keeping it is real, it really man. That, that's, yeah, is it that's, really that good, though? I mean, hey, go throw a fluke on the grass. Well, well, I go throw a fluke on 
any lake in the country and catch a fish, but that's not, in my opinion, that's not what I would want to know if I was a kid. I would want to know, like, how's that guy going out there and catching those big bass mm-hmm. rather than, you know. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 YouTube, I agree. With that. I, I think you're doing great. I think you're killing the game on YouTube. I love it. I, and and uh, from someone who's been doing, putting a lot of effort in for the last year, I know how how much work it takes to do this. It's yeah. a lot of work. I mean, just editing alone is it's ridiculous how much time you can spend doing little tiny things to make it what you think is going to be entertaining and better for them. And and I, you have my respect for sure because it's a pain. Well, it's a pain in my ass. I can tell you that. I mean, before yeah, we yeah. even you and I were talking before we started this, I was editing. I was editing at you know nine o'clock this tonight here in Florida. It, it's just what it is. Okay, last question before I I let you go. And again, everyone go to Todd Castledine Fishing on YouTube. Check them out on, on, on Facebook. Um, if you have a bucket list fish or a bucket list a bucket list place to go fishing, what are they? Um, so I've never been peacock bass fishing. Shut your mouth. No, I want to go. Come down. I got a guy. I got, honestly. Y'all have down there. We, in Orlando, I don't. But I have the single best guide I can put you with. His name's High. Uh, he's 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 not a professional fisherman. He's a guide, but he would take you fishing for free in a millisecond. And he catches like the ones that have the big humps on them, the the right. ones, the five six pounders. Those fish, and he catches them nonstop. The dude, I mean, he can flat out fish. So if you come down yeah, to Florida. That- yeah, I mean, if you come down to Florida, Orlando, you got to stop and say hello to start off with. But and I'm a I'm a frog fisherman, right? So yeah. Like like that's like you know the pop and perch was it was my deal, and that's what we're out there today, just killing them on. So I'm like I'm a guy who wants to throw a top water everywhere I go. So that's just that's the one thing I, I've been wanting to go. Obviously down to the Amazon and do it, but I mean I just want to go. That's how I want to go catch them. I want to go catch them on top. Yeah. They and crush just, and witness that stuff. Yeah, once and you just throw, I just want to throw a big bait until I cannot throw a big bait anymore. And my arm hurts. That's what I want to do. So we have them. Once you get to West Palm Beach here in Florida, from West Palm Beach south, they have stocked all the all the right. tributary, now, the canals. Yeah. And you, what's crazy is you'll go fish down there and you'll get a giant peacock, and then ten casts later you'll get a really nice snook or tarpon, and you'll be like, "What the hell is happening here?" And then. Five minutes later, you'll, be, you'll have a largemouth bass. They're all okay. in these tributaries. And they don't fish for them that much? Well, I mean, no, not okay. that much. But okay, uh, I think there's – well, when you go fish for them, the, the bigger, louder commotion baits that they are, the better it, it is. So there's certain areas – that you that will hold the fish better than other areas, and learning that process is why, like high is the best guy down there. Okay. Uh, you you can go like I've I've got a spot that's behind a Walgreens in down in South Florida, and literally you would see this pond and you would go that is shit. There's nothing in there, there, but as soon as your bait hits the water, I can promise you you'd have a two or three pound peacock bass on. Or if you or if you didn't, it would be a snook or a tarpon, and you and it's it's has no rhyme or reason. But then when you start looking how it's connected to other other canals, then you go, oh, that makes a lot more sense. Right. So you whenever you're if I mean, are you are you fishing the what op, are you fishing the southern opens or the easterns? Both. You Both. are. So yeah, I I missed you when you're down here uh, for. What it was, Harris Chain or no Kissimmee? Where, where was I? Kissimmee. Yeah, Kiss- Toho. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because J- uh, John Cox was right down the street from me. Right. That's, okay. That's a, that's my boy. Um, but yeah, you were a l- you were still up a little bit ways. You needed to get down south. But if you I, if you come down, I'd love to 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 collab or take you fishing or do whatever, and and I'll send you south with well, high. Yeah. Well, like I said. Florida. Now that I've started fishing, you know these things. I, I just don't see how I don't go to Florida every year. So yeah, you well, know, like the opens or the tour, the co- like. It, the last three years, I've been in Florida every year. So, which was is new to me. I've been down to Florida, but obviously not bass fishing. So I mean, 
Um, I'll be down in Florida. <laughs> I'll be down in Florida in July. I go down there to Pensacola every day. Wait till you see those videos. Oh, I'm finally gonna film this stuff. My daughter caught like a 30 pound red off the. Oh, uh, nice. Off the, oh yeah, we kept like I get out there on the bank and just I have figured out how to catch them down there. Yeah, red fishing is so, fun. Red fishing is fun. Well. I catch I catch anything that bites down there, so I catch a lot of random weird big stuff. That's that, but yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, dude! I really appreciate the time tonight. Thank you very much. I know you've been slam busy and filming and stuff. I got to get your boy Brian. It's it's a Brian Upshaw, isn't it? Andrew. Andrew. Andrew Upshaw. Why do I think it's why do I? Th- I'd love to have him on the show Brian here soon. Humber. Yeah, yeah, uh, and talk to him. But everyone need you need to go check out Todd Castledine fishing on the YouTube channel. Uh, and and just enjoy what this man makes because he keeps it real and it's just awesome. So thank you very much for the time tonight. Thank you to your wife for putting up with me, by the way. And uh, uh, and and really, I I wish you all the best and and keep safe and healthy and and kill them out there, man. And let's see, I'd love to see you on the leads here soon. All right, hey, and, and thanks for having me on. And man, I'm always down to do these. So anytime you want to, just holler at me. I will. I'm sure I got something else to say. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate. It. I'm going to hit finish and talk to you for a second off air. But thank you again. Hold on. All right.